Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Woolly Mike, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Here we go again. Clash of Steel, War of Unification, Box 2. Or Box 1, depends what order we release them in. Yep. This is the Sovietski versus British. Uh, so do you want to tell them what comes in the box, mate? Okay. 19 highly detailed tanks, commanders, decals, rule books, everything else that you would have got in the original All starter the bits. sets. And 19 tanks. Yeah. All right. Let's get this open. And uh, yeah, we're not going to go in a lot of detail over kind of how the game plays and so forth. We covered that a lot in the first series of reviews we did. So if you're interested in that, look at the Operation Unthinkable videos where we talk a lot about how Clash of Steel works in terms of the missions and objectives. It's fundamentally the same kind of combat mechanics as Flames of War, but its objective system is quite different. All right, uh, all different colored greens. I'll take the, the limey green. Limey green for the British. Is it the British? Oh, it is the British are in limey green. So there's lots and lots of tanks in here. And there's some dices in the appropriate colours. That's another limey green, is it? Yeah. Turret. Limey green. Oh, I'll let you have that. And then a, a wad of stuff. All right, we'll sort these into piles and we'll be right back. We'll take you through the paper bits and stuff first and then we will go through the uh, sprues one by one. You get the core rule sheet, which is just uh, gonna take you through your first turn or two, get your rule book, it's very familiar, similar to Flames of War for those who've played before, but the missions are different. And then you get your little sort of mini army box, yep. your codexes. Um, so this has got, it's taken a timeline on, so we've got a 1953 German uprising, and then we've got a 1956 Hungarian revolution as part of the story, uh, telling us what our forces have been doing. We then move on to our, our, our codex, if you will, and basically they've added some new units to the roster and carried forward everything. And a lot of the World War II stuff um, has gone off the core list, but it's still available as support units. So you can take any core unit from the old box as a support unit in this one. Um, so uh, in this list is very much your headquarters of centurions, conquerors, charioteers, tots, or other centurions. So various centurion types. But what I really like about it is as you go further back, uh, yeah, it takes you, it talks about the new units, but these older units are still in this book, like uh, Comet and Archer and things yeah. like that there. They're still there, and that's in fact replicated. When we look at this uh, game cards and stuff, or unit cards, it's the full deck. It's everything, so you don't have to buy that separately. Normally with these starter boxes, they only give you the cards for the units that you've got in it, but actually in this, you're getting the full deck to play this, play this game. So as you expand from this set, it's all here. We also got a decal sheet. Decals, allied, German and Soviet. And Soviet. Stars. So it's, it's, a, it's a mixed decal sheet. I think unique to this box set, which is great. Green and red dice. For the, the colors of our respective factions, 10 of each. And uh, tank commanders, Soviet and commanders. allied. 10 of each and there's only 19 tanks, so yeah. that's more tank commanders than you're going to uh, ever want to li The little um, spinner bits for the plugs. Oh, yeah. The, there is a spinner for points counting. You can put them on the wrong way around. Do that carefully before you pop the studs in, because once you pop them in, they don't want to come out. Yeah. Uh, somebody said online that they'd managed to get them out, but I hadn't. Yeah. When I, I, when I, when I did it wrong. I, I, I put them together and then watched the video when Johnny saying, be careful. Yeah. Oh, could have told me before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Could have watched the video before. Maybe. I should have watched the video before. Should have yeah. watched the video. Yes, absolutely. What do we want to start? Want to start with Soviets game? Should we start with the Soviets? So... The IS-3. The IS-3. Joseph Stalin-3. We get three of these 
Uh, nice straightforward kit. You get them in the um, first box as well. Which is handy because these come in a unit of up to 10. And if you yeah. take 10 of them, it's only 33 points. It's interesting because this game's got these paper panzers. Mm. It's got these science fiction tanks in it. It's got these 1950s tanks. The IS-3 was in the Victory Parade in Berlin. And we looked at that and was like, wow, that's a big tank. Yeah. We don't have anything that can deal with that. Because actually, it's not that powerful a vehicle in this game. Um, as you can see from the fact that they're 3.3 points each. Yeah. It's got a front armour of 40, which is competitive, and it's got an anti-tank power of 14, which is not competitive. This is not a powerful tank in this game. Yeah. This is a... Yeah, a, a, yeah. Medi a medium tank at best. Um, because that, although it's got that 122mm gun, it's obviously not got good ammunition or something. And does it go together okay, Mike? You've built a few of these? Um, yeah, I think I've got six of them now. That, that'll take me up to nine. Nice. So that'll give you me can almost nice... fill the unit. Yeah. Um, yeah, straightforward kit, not many problems. The, the, the side rails mm -hmm. have got like a thin bit at this. You've, you've got a couple of different sides, which... Um, depending on the variant you you want to build, it's probably like Aram on anything. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, so you just need to be careful with those. Get them on. Of course, partly they're optional. You want to pass me the switch so I can show them. It's the way that the upper hull has been manufactured here. You can see there's there's gaps in it here. Um, I'm not sure why. It must be to do with fidelity and, and injection molding. So you've got these almost like gills that fit in the side of it. They do fit well, but they are a little bit fiddly. Yeah. But I'd rather that than have a badly cast model. You know, if, if, the, if those are yeah. the choices, I'll take this. Because apart from that, it's still like 10 pieces overall, right? Yeah. Like most of their kits. And presumably it all went together snug? It did. The the, the, the extra barrels. The um, external fuel tanks. They, they, they're, they're a little bit fiddly with big fingers. Yes. Because they're... Yeah, they've got on one side, they've got little almost like pins that stick out, which, yeah. which are, are, are the kind of go at the bottom facing the body of the tank. Yeah. And it just gives you an extra connecting point to glue to. Um, we've had that with several external fuel tanks. But yeah, but because they're, they're so small, it's getting that point and spot in the right place. Absolutely, absolutely. And then making them look all the same. Then we've got the T44, the T54, T55. It, it's one sprue. <laughs> one, uh, uh, plus. Yeah. Plus these bits. So, in this game, let's see which of those are available. T44, uh, T54-1, uh, T54-3, and T44, T44 Recon. I'm just looking through, because these are all coming off this same sprue. Yes, okay. So T44 and T44 Recon, and the Recon is going to let you have the spearhead roll. T44 is essentially a development from T34, but it just wasn't sufficiently better to be produced in large numbers yeah. at the end, uh, towards the end of the Second World War. So it kind of gets skipped to some extent. It is, manif it is real, it is made, but not large numbers of them, because T54 comes not long after that yeah so you build the t44 and then it's got the t3485 turret yes so that's the first turret option yeah whereas to build the t54 we've got t54 one and three here and that's going to be very different turrets so the t54 one the earliest one has got that really flat low turret, which is on this upgrade sprue yeah. here, because that's quite new. That came with War yeah. of Unification. That's your T-54-1. Whereas your T-54-3 is the, yeah. the turret on the main sprue that doesn't have the kind of um, spaced armor and so forth around it. Because that T-55 uh, or T-54 is the earliest Team Yankee sprue, if that makes sense. That, yeah. that that tank is still in service in Team Yankee armies, which is supposed to be like 80s, 90s. Different hull plate for the turret, different glasses plate. 
Um, and so you've got the four different types because you can even build the T55 AM. You can build the T55 AM, which is the kind of remodeled with a better, better missile launcher and yeah. that, things like thermal imaging for a kind of 1980s version of a T55. Yeah, so it's, again, different options. Some of them are cosmetic enough where you can build build the later one and still put the T44 turret on because the, the, the differences on the table are very small. But if you want to be accurate, you can do it a different way, but you can build the interchangeable turrets. I've actually been building some of these to become Iraqi T55 AMs. Oh, yes, because you're looking at the, I've looking got, at the desert one, yeah, aren't you? So I've you've got, got a lot of these bro. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's not much more complicated. It's a tiny bit more complicated than most of their other kits. It seems complex because there's so many versions of this tank, fundamentally. And the fact that they've retrofitted the T54 on the same sprue, because it is basically the same hull. I get why they've done yeah. it. It ends up making this kit feel quite complicated when it, it really isn't. It's just there's a lot of options there. Yeah. I, 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 like I say, I think it's great. You've got enough turret pins to make several different turrets as well. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, again, I've got at least a dozen of those now. Yeah. But some are, some are going for Clash of Steel, some of them are going to go into the... Yeah. And the Iraqi ones are going to paint quite differently. Yeah. And I, I did, ma did manage to pick up some of the old resin and metal T55 AM. Oh, wow. Um, that when, when we went to Battlefront. Yeah. So they're going to form the... the, the there's already a 10 of those, so two complete different forces going to be built and I'm looking forward to fielding both of them at some stage. The smallest unit of T-44 T-44s you can take is five. How many did we get in here? Only three? Only three, but if you've already got the other one. you already got the other one, you could do that. But you wouldn't really want to take that anyway. You can take them as three as a recon company and at that, for eight points, you're going to get three of the T-44s and you get the spearhead rule, and that's the thing that I would want to do with those, really. the T4, If I was making T-44s, I'd be making them as a recon element in this. <clears throat> T-44 has got a 12-inch tactical move, which is nice, and the tank power is only 12, 5 power 3 out, and it's got 10 front armour. So it's just another one of these vehicles that can, can fight only other quite weak vehicles and probably in the flank, but that spearhead rule is worth playing for, especially paying for because it moves your deployment area forwards which puts you so much closer to objectives you, you're, you're scoring objectives on it much earlier than you would be massively more likely to score objectives in turn one as t54s your front armor goes up to 12 and then 13 for the upgraded one and your firepower is 15 up to 17 with the upgraded one you can again take them in packs of 10 um, which means it's 3.2 points for the t54 one and 3.8, 3.9, my eyesight is so bad that my reading glasses, 39 points for 10 yeah. of the T55 threes. And the T55 threes with 17 firepower are starting to get competitive. They're gonna threaten even the heaviest of tanks in the flank, Yeah. Um, which is why they get, they've got those points associated with them. So lots of different things you can do with those kits. Yeah. Uh, what are you gonna do with them, Mike? These are gonna be, um Probably T-54 threes. Yeah, yeah. T-54 threes. Yeah, yeah. all right. And, and then the, last of all... The new one. The new, new... The tank. Joseph Stalin 7. The Joseph Stalin 7. So this is the heavy tank design um, slated to replace IS-3. Something like one of which was ever made. There's, there's one in the museum and it's a... You, using the term, we, we've got paper panzers and um, napkin Nazis. I think this is a Serviette so A so Serviette Soviet. Soviet. Okay. So again, we're talking like eight pieces, a huge, huge gun. Got that really distinctive Soviet, quite low profile hull. But the turret is massive on this. It's absolutely enormous. It's got a 130 mil gun which is only generating an anti-tank power of, of 18 with a two-up firepower. You got how many of these? Three? Three. Four? I'm holding one. Uh, four then. Four then, uh, assuming yours is the same. You can take it as a single headquarters for 11 points, or you can take it as four of them for 43, or you can do one and 
one and three. So they're just over 10 points a model. 19 front armor and 18 penetration. I think this makes it a solid tank. Around. Still can't deal with the heaviest of tanks from the front, but 10 inch tactical move are not too expensive. Yeah. I think that this is a, it's a great inclusion to the range. I think the Soviets really needed this as well. In the last box, they just didn't have the heavy hitters the last time. Yeah. The IS-3 just isn't strong enough, and the other tanks were even weaker. Yeah, so in the in the first Clash of Steel box, I've got two sets of Soviets mm. to have take on, even taken on the start of German box. Really? You needed all those tubes. Right. To, sh to make the shots. To be able to sort of like be competitive, and it's still it's still hard work mm. staying on the objectives with the German big guns, and similarly with the American Doom Turtle, you know that big mm. firepower. It's you've got to get on early, and you've you've got the have the depth to stay there and get the points. You know you've got two or three tanks on an objective, you're going to get knocked off early, mm. and number of shots you're putting out to the enemy if you've got most of these are single shot stationary uh, oh the soviets definitely um probably are or, single or overworked is7 halted rate of fire 2 actually that's an interesting point i didn't look at that the t54s and 44s no they do they don't have the flames or so the t54s have the halted yeah right of one, whereas the others have uh, halted two. And what about the IS-3? What's the IS-3? One and one. One and one, yeah. <coughs> whereas the IS-7 is two and one. So that's that's a huge improvement for a Soviet, isn't it? Yeah. Huge improvement. Um, but it is still hit on threes rather than fours. And then most of them seem to have the slow firing roll. Yeah, it does It does also have the slow firing roll, so if you move this, it's a lot worse. Yeah. But you're not paying many points for them. I yeah. Think, I think this is one well worth considering. Ten of these is 107 points, so unfortunately the game's not that big enough. But you could certainly take sort of six of these for 65 points. I think would be a good shout. Yeah. I think it's a good, I think it's a good solid tank. And then you can get a whole load of junk. Um, yeah, to, pa to pad out the force and give you the numbers and the coverage. A bit like Soviets in Flames of War and Team mm. Yankee, you're going to take swarms of the, the cheap stuff mm. um, and a nice selection of the IS-3s and then you're going to have the heavy firepower. You're going to um, back them up with heavy. Yeah, that brings, you know, the, the mouse, the tortoise and the doom turtle, you know, the IS-7 is going to be the, the, the Soviet attempt on the that. The Soviet equivalent of that, yeah. yeah. Alright, that was the Soviets, we'll be right back with the British. Tortoise first. Uh, Tots came in the last set. It's assembled a little bit different from your other tanks because it's very tall. You've got sides to put on it. They're not they're not moulded in with the upper hull. So because of the the way most tanks work, the tracks and running gear are covering up. The fact that you can't get a lot of fidelity depth in depth and injection molding. So when you've got detailed sides without um, tracks, like you get on this and like you get on APCs, they have to mold them separately. And so you're going to stick them on the side. Now it's not a problem, but you do need to be a little bit careful as you because you've got a lot of different parts in different planes. I wouldn't super glue anything. I would, you know, with wet glue, make sure everything is aligned and then rubber band it so that it sits. It's possible for gaps to appear. And the same thing is possible with the tracks because what they're going to want to do um, as they're drying is they're going to want to sag under gravity and they're going to want to pull just a little bit away from the hole, which can leave you with a little bit of a gap. Yeah, the, um, it wasn't a problem on the ones I built this before, but I but I was just mindful of that problem. It's probably enough just to have it to put it upside down while it's drying, while the glue's drying. Yeah, one one of the good things is instead of having the where around the idler and the drive sprocket, often they come with us uh, an extra piece. They're molded into the front bulkhead and rear bulkhead. The extra bits yeah. of track. 
So you've got a good key point when you do put them on. Yes, yes. But that's what makes it, it it's quite bad if it pulls away because yeah. there's just not there's no wheel or nothing behind it. But it is a good kit, it did go together well, and as a vehicle, it's a cracker. It's absolutely huge as well. There's one of those at the tank museum and Yeah. So this this thing they did build these, they built six of them, I think. They've yeah. got one at yeah. the tank museum. Yeah. You've seen that a few times, taken us some pictures. So this was built uh, as a siege breaker. We were concerned in the D-Day planning that when we got to what we called then the siege free line, what, we, what the Germans called the Westphal, these series of pre-war fortifications on the Franco-German border, we were worried we were going to hit World War One type static warfare. So we built some tanks, so we built some very heavily armoured vehicles, with very powerful weapons, specifically to break up those defences. Turned out the Westphal was actually a joke. Um, most of the, the weapons had been removed to be put on the Atlantic Wall. So it was a series of blockhouses and bunkers and so forth, but it was just guys with rifles and machine guns. So it wasn't the obstacle we thought it was. So this vehicle was never built in large numbers. No. But it had, it was more than just a design concept. Now in game, it's got an anti-tank power of 18 and a front armor of 21. Um, and you can take three of these in a unit for 33 points, or you can have them as a HQ, still 11 points a model. I think it's a belter. It is an assault gun, which is very limited, especially in this game. You do need this thing to hand back, hang back so that it can get arc of fire more of an overwatch type vehicle you don't want too many of them uh because if you push it forwards the side armor of 11 even your kind of t44s and easy eights are going to yeah. start taking shots at it and it's a powerful vehicle to be losing to uh, some junk units because you've exposed your side so i think you've only got one in the original box yes so you, you, it, you've got two here yeah so that'll take you up to three which is the maximum yeah. unit size. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you'd want more than that either. Yeah. I don't think I want to use it as my HQ. Not that your HQ matters hugely in it, but it's just a very expensive model to be on its own. But I, I don't know. You could because you can conceivably have both. It depends. In this force, you could take two of them as your HQ because you're not paying extra points. I yeah. guess compared to other vehicles, they're often more expensive as an HQ, aren't they? So maybe I would. We'd, we'd see. Yeah. So maybe maybe not push it forward to take an objective, but you will deny an objective. They do a lot of killing. Yeah. They got a very powerful gun on them. You know, apart from things like mouse in the front, they can yeah. deal with in the Doom Turtle. Even they can deal with stuff. So that's that. We had that in the previous one, so that's not a um, uh, huge difference. Centurion. Centurion is up next. Now this 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 one gets uh, quite a uh, bit like T fifty five. Yeah. Because <clears throat> Centurion, they, when they made this brew, they made it when they released the Danish. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Or the Norwegians or something. I think was it Danish? It was, it was, it was both. The um it was yeah. the, the, the Nordic, Nordic forces. forces, yeah. This vehicle has been in service for a terribly, terribly long time and has been modernized in different ways by different nations at different times. As a result of which there's a lot of options on this bro. It is still fundamentally a ten piece tank, but you do need to know which gun uh, which torrent version, etc., that you're going to use because there's several different ways of building it. Yeah. The previously we had Centurion 1, which has the Polston cannon in the turret, yeah. which is very, very distinctive. And that was the Centurion in the previous kit. Here we're being given cards for Centurion 1 and 3. So Centurion 3 differs. The. the it's a bigger gun, no post and cannon, so it's got a different mantlet that goes on to the front of the turret. Actually, I'm wrong, because there's Centurion 5, 1 and 5, 2 as well. So there are, in fact, four different versions of Centurion you could build. The 1 has the post and cannon, yep. if you had that from before. The 3 is upgunned. So we go from 15 to 17 on Centurion 3. And 
then Centurion 5.1 and 5.2 are later versions which go up to 13 front armor and 5.1 is 17 anti-tank power with a 20 pounder and Centurion 5.2 gets that L705 mil gun which is in service with Western armies for yep. years. It's a very good gun which has got 18 anti-tank power. So how many more points are you paying? Well, Centurion 1 is 7 points a model. 3 is 10 points a model. No, 5 points a model. Is that right? Is 1 better? No, that was 2. 4 points. 5 points for 3. Uh, 8 points for 5, 1. And 9 points for 5, 2. And I can tell you of all the tanks, of all the options, I'm taking the 5, 2. Because I think the firepower is so important in this game. Uh, 18 firepower is good enough for most things and straight through the side of most things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you think. And it's a 9-point model when a lot of the others are 10 and 11 because they've got more armour. As we saw with the T44, 55, 44, mm. the several builds, um, uh, but the latest one does seem to be the best one. Um, for this game yeah, and the way this game is played. Or you need something in that role, shall, shall we say. Yeah. So on the sprue, all of these use the early engine deck. Mm -hmm. The later engine deck is for the Nordic forces. The, the Mark I is on the extended sprue, and then most of the others are built from the standard the, turret. The standard turret in the middle there, yeah. And then it, it, it's options of the, the, the front mantler, some st stowage at the rear, and different types of turret. Mm. And there's lots of barrels available to you. Lots of barrels? Oh, gun barrels. Yes. Gun barrels, yeah, for, for different versions. So again, it looks like a complicated kit, but it, it, it it's because it makes many variants. It's still basically 10. In this case, it's maybe more like 12 pieces because of some of the variations. Yeah. It has to make some adjustment, like the engine deck and the, and the, to the gun and the mantler are separate in a way that they're not necessarily in others when there's only one real way to do it. But it's not a bad kit. You're gonna have a lot of plastic left on the sprue when you've built this. Yeah. Um, because of the way that it's constructed. And there's even the ERA packages for the Nordic forces there. For so later. If you want to go that way. And then you're gonna, yeah, no, no ERA in this. So, yeah. and it's given you all the cards. I think ultimately with these, because of all the variations that we've got, I think it probably is important to make your list Yes. Decide what you want before you build, because you are going to build, like with the T-54, although all the options are there, they're not all interchangeable once you've glued bits on. I'd decide on the list that you want, and then build them. Yeah. Uh, we've got two more tanks to look at. So, Charioteer. Charioteer is a Cromwell sprue, which you've seen before, because Charioteer is... Uh, another one of these vehicles that is built um, to replace Firefly. There's 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 a f there's a few attempts. Um, so this is is this is a Cromwell sprue, it's right? It's Cromwell sprue, yeah. It's Cromwell sprue. It's got that. It's definitely that's a Cromwell turret and hull, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just worried that when you start talking about stuff in the late 40s and 50s, that there are tanks that I've never heard of that begin with C. <laughs> um, and this is one of them. I didn't know anything about Charioteer until this came. Well, I, I don't know when it started, but if you if, in the Second World War mm. and onwards. Every British main tank starts with C. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. I've never, I've not been able to find out why. Um, it's cruiser tanks are named with C's. Yeah, but Churchill is not a cruiser tank. That's true. Centurion's not a cruiser. Everything wow. Challenger, Chieftain. Well, the, mo the modern ones. Are yeah, they? yeah, yeah. Why well, they're all C's? I don't know. I know why yeah. the cruiser tanks are named with C. Yeah, and cruiser tanks become medium tanks, I guess. So anyway, you get a full Cromwell. That's a Cromwell in every way, right? Yep. Yep, it's not... Yeah, that box turret, that is a Cromwell. Okay. It just doesn't... It doesn't say... It might say it here, but we can't read it. It's I'm very, very tiny sure writing. I, I, had to, I yeah. had to use a camera zoom in to see... Oh, the, you did do that? Yeah. And then we get this upgrade sprue then, which is going to allow us to build Charioteer. So, um, this is... 
So the one of the things about Cromwell is Cromwell and, and Comet are just a lot faster and therefore Firefly and, and it just can't keep up with it. So they want to they want to build a uh, you know a hev a heavy gun tank in terms of its gun armament to support them in the way that they'd use Firefly with the 17 pounder. So this ends up with the um, the 20 pounder. Um, which has got a 17 anti-tank score, which is fantastic. And it's still got that 12 inch move chariot here. It's not in this game making you put it in platoons with Cromwells. It's coming on its own. Take it as an armored troop as a core unit, three or four of them for 11 or 14 points. So that's what, three and a half, three and a third points each. The upgrade sprue is brilliant. Because that means I have some Cromwells and I just plop this on. Yep. Because it's just the turret, isn't it? Often these upgrades are a little bit more of, oh, that's the hatch peg. Yeah, open and closed hatches. Mantler and gun. Yeah. Yep. This is this. So you can just take your existing Cromwells if you have some and just build the turret. Fantastic. Um, right down to the turret peg. Yeah. And the interesting thing is the charioteer, there's two barrels on here. Mm. The charioteer says use the smooth barrel. Yeah. But there is a different, looks like it's same length, but it's got a um, fume extractor. Yes. So is there another variant of charioteer that we'll see later? Mm, possibly. Possibly. So that was charioteer. Um, and I just told you what she was like in game, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've already covered that. All right, three of those. Three of those, very nice. In one of the old halls, mm -hmm. on one side you've got the, the top two, which is a huge beast. You've got the tortoise. Then you've got a prototype chieftain right. and a Mark I challenger. And then at the end you've got a conqueror. Now these four tanks oh, are yeah. all huge and... These, the Tortoise and the Conqueror, which we're going to look at now, mm. they're, they're early post-war tanks, but they are as large or, or larger, larger than, than Challenger 1 yeah. and um, which, are, which are modern main battle tanks. Yeah, they're huge. So Conqueror, we get one of them in here. Uh, you cannot take it singly. So in this box, that is your headquarters. Yeah. Because we only get one in here, unless we've lost one. But I think, I think we only get the one. It is 12 points. It's a beast of a vehicle. It's got 19 front armor. So that's better than all the guns we've looked at today, nearly. I think, did something have 20 odd firepower? There, there was a 26. And that, oh, we looked in the oh, German sorry, box. Sorry, yeah. That was in the German yeah, box, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's got 21 firepower, which is, is that bigger than Tortoise? Tortoise is 18, yeah. yeah. 21 firepower and 19 front armor because um, it's got a 120 millimeter gun. Now, interestingly, so you know how we were saying that like, the Soviets have that one and one rate of fire and the slow firing? Conqueror is worse. Conqueror's got a halted rate of fire of one and a moving rate of fire of dash. <laughs> <laughs> I assume. That's because it's multi-part ammunition and not a lot of space in which to operate it. Because that's a huge gun. So that is why you are getting them at 12 points a model. Yeah. Because the rate of fire is crippling on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, still gets a 10 inch tactical move, still hit on four, all of those other bits. Kit wise. Just looking at it, um, I don't know if you can see it very well, but the, the, the standard body key in, rather mm. than being recessed, is, is large boxes because the track units are so wide. Yes. So uh, unlike what we had on Tortoise, is the tracks and the running gear are molded in a single piece. But being as big as they are means that it's very deep. Yeah. And so what Mike was saying is that the, the keying points are different on the holes. So the hole's got massive lugs on it and uh, the tracks and running gear have got recesses. But looking at the number of wheels and stuff we've got here, 
I am just delighted that this is all one piece. <laughs> I've made too many model kits where they've got like, yeah, each wheel is two halves of a wheel stuck together. None of that. Um, so you've still got, in that classic Flames of War, the kind of lower hull canoe to which you attach the two tracks, which are keyed so you can't get them the wrong way around. You stick the upper hull and engine deck down as a single piece and your tank is mostly complete. You then assemble your turret from a couple of parts. Now the turret on here, it does have a few more parts because it's quite an, a curious design. It's, it's kind of raised at the back and almost got, I assume it's a stowage bin. Yeah, you've got a rack. So a bit like um, the American tanks, they've, they've had to extend the turret because these breaches are bigger because it's two part ammunition. Yeah. They've got two loaders, one for each part of it. So the commander's pushed back into the bustle area. Mm. And so the whole thing, the whole turret is just getting deeper. And the way they've managed it on this one is that the, the turret actually goes to four parts. Yeah. And then you, you then you're adding on the, um, the the hatch and the machine gun, um, but for such a big tank, it's 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 a nice compact design and a to put it together. And such an unusual shape for that tank, yeah. compared to this kind of the dome or the box that we're used to with the really modern ones. This is a lot of a lot of curved surfaces. They've done a really good job in keeping the piece count down. The barrel. Again, this is what I love about plastic stuff is as long as you don't bend the sprue, it's like I have had a numerous metal <laughs> cannon for World War Two, like 28 yeah. mil this size, and they're all crooked. I'm looking at that and it is straight as an arrow. It's beautiful. This is a beautiful tank, yeah. I think. And something, interestingly, because of tortoise, I don't even think the British need this. But if you are someone who wants an, a, a near indestructible and really powerful headquarters tank, this is it. Would I want to take a troop of them? That no shooting if you move is brutal. It is. It is totally there, brutal. Are there any? Other, there are some. What are the other special rules you got on the bottom there? They're just the pretty common ones. Like accurate means you don't pay the long range hit penalty, um, and you um, and protected yeah. ammo means you remount. Large numbers of these vehicles have got them. In fact, I think all of these British ones have got the protected ammo. Yeah. So there's 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 a few uh, kind of very common rules, which is why I hadn't pointed them out. Yeah. Interesting set of forces, Mike. I, I I like the I like these new British ones quite a lot. Um, having a, the Cromwell upgun in the Cromwell, I like the Conqueror. It's a really interesting vehicle. More of the tortoises from what I played the previous one. Tortoises is what you wanted mm. all day long. Don't like the tortoise. Don't like the tortoise. <laughs> um, and then for the Soviets, what did you what did you think? I think it, 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 we've got the big tank now, and we've got mm. in, uh, several of them, which make which is a, a good balance. The IS seven, yeah, and then and you're you still, needed it, I think. Yeah, and then you you the the problem I see with the Russians when you see on um, Flames and Team Yankee is sometimes you've just got to take swarms. Yeah, you know they come into units of ten, and you're playing yeah. five units of fifty tanks yeah. against. Um, Probably three units of five tanks each in the others, and um, I like the variation. Uh, if you've if you've watched our Flames of War games, we're always bringing something different to the table. It's not so always, always trying to yeah not refight the same game yeah. yeah. So it's it's not Panzer Fours versus early Shermans. Uh, we bring in the half tracks and the, so we having, change the board or we change the yeah. list or we ch yeah. So having having all these different and and lots of them having the command option. Mm. means that we can interchange well i'm going to try those as a command mm. this time yeah you know my my light tanks are going to be my command my heavy tanks are going to be the the objective takers because again this game plays different from a normal flames of war scenario you have to compete for the middle yeah. of the table from turn one or you're not scoring yeah. the objectives well from turn two definitely in, you might get away with one in, in one of the games with sean I, I i to be sneaky we had the game where the, the objectives were in quarters there's only two right. of them and i kept my two mouse off and bring them in reserve because i was going to come into the objective i couldn't get to easily mm. and steam the two mouse on 
And they never arrived. They never, never arrived, <laughs> ever. And that and that's something, you know, well, we were just did the Arnhem videos. Sometimes yeah. Second Army just isn't gonna make yeah. it, right? Um as a set, is as a as a versus set, I think it's pretty I think it's pretty good. I think it's more balanced than the other ones. As a bolt on to anyone who bought the previous of these two armies, I think they're really good because I think you get extra units of the ones you want and something new yeah. to throw into the mix. Maybe the, the British is slightly better deal than the Soviets in terms of like, I want all of these things. But they're still, the Soviets are packing in that swamp. And those late T-55s, late for this game, not yeah. late for them, were pretty good as well as IS-3. Yeah. Was it 19 tanks? Yeah. 19 tanks for the money, I think great value for money, especially if you're building on an existing collection. If you're in the UK and interested, of course, you can buy this and all the other Clash of Steel stuff from modelingforadvantage.co.uk. Any final thoughts, Mike? Wave one, wave two, fantastic. Bring on wave three. Bring on wave three. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.